Hey folks, apparently serious climate change is very close. Uh, very, very close. Now, if you've been paying attention to some of these other articles, you know that they're worried about a methane release, methane already being released from the poles. There's a ton of it under there, and they've also told us that methane caused the largest extinction of all time. This is something to be concerned about. Looking around the world right now, the people in the Philippines are really struggling. There's more than 250 dead and uh, over double that missing. Uh, and those numbers are expected to rise. Take a look at what this tropical depression did and is doing. Coming on land, chilling, moving back, and only then moving forward. The aftermath, the flooding, the flash floods um, are really uh, giving these people a hard time. Uh, going over here to the Caribbean uh, plate region, we had a couple of five-pointers last night and this morning uh, in Puerto Rico. You might remember yesterday we were pointing out these two uh, opposite side of the Caribbean Plate Earthquakes 4.0 and when that happens on opposite sides usually somewhere there's a bigger one in the next day or two hopefully that's it and we won't see any more uh, activity in the Caribbean region. Folks we have a, a lot of questions about the disconnecting tail of this comet we've heard some very very serious explanations but there's a very simple one all right now watch here as we move this closer there's gonna be a second little tail that comes off to the left you can see it start to emerge now and by now you should really be able to see that second little tail. Well that happens because the solar wind is now hitting the comet at a different angle. It was uh, coming basically uh, more or less right at the sun, but as it got close it was around the side of the sun and then to the back of the sun. You can even see here uh, as a, on the close up the little blip uh, on the tail there as it skims across. You know maybe that was caused by a magnetic loop or maybe just of how fast it was going. I mean you can still see the tail on the other side of the sun. There's no forces acting on that and the comet doesn't have a tail on the other side of the sun right there because it's moving too fast and only as it gets further away from the sun moving in one direction the solar wind can create that tail. I want to talk to you a bit about the critical frequencies in the F1 layer because this is absolutely ridiculous and I, I can't seem to get anybody's attention on this. All right, this is the critical frequencies in the F1 layer, uh, how charged up we are in our F1 layer uh, over the last year. I'll take a look at that. We're going to go back all the way till, uh, all the way past the last solar maximum, uh, back to 1999, 1998. These are all the critical frequencies, and you can see the the date stamp there, uh, right underneath the chart. Even as we get back into the last solar maximum, look, it was barely higher. You know, it was definitely a little bit higher, but, um, you know, take a look at what we're, what we're looking at now. This is a precipitous cumulative problem, uh, and it could have something to do with Tesla Tech, Scalar, or Harp-like technology. We'll try to bring you a full report on this this weekend, folks. Be safe.